So we're celebrating place and the role of planners in making great places. And we're in Clydebank because our convener, Pamela Clifford, is very proud of the work she did as the senior planner in Western Berkshire Council, which is where we are located. We've covered a lot of ground. We've talked about some of the kind of negative sides of planning, so planning being seen as a blocker, but actually the important work that planning does to unlock development and to enable things to happen. That's both sort of economic development, infrastructure delivery, and also housing. And housing is a massive challenge in Scotland because there's a national housing emergency as declared by the Scottish Parliament. Um, so it's a, it's a really key issue about the delivery of housing and the role of planners in that, but not just delivering units of housing, also delivering great places, places to live and to work. And we go back to Patrick Geddes. Um, we're also celebrating Patrick Geddes's 170th birthday this month. Um, and at this event, and of course, Patrick Geddes talked about not just place planning, but folk planning. So thinking about the people in the places. There's a number of challenges. One is about resourcing in the public sector. We've lost planners, as in lots of other bits of at the UK, we've lost planners into the private sector and particularly into renewables, so we haven't got enough people to do some of this. We also have a big challenge in Scotland around the market and land values because in some of our in some of our authorities they have land, they have land for development, but it's not coming forward because there's not there's not enough profit. That uh, commercial development is not viable in those locations. So we've got a, we've got a huge issue about how we fill that gap in those places that need development. Uh, need housing, need affordable housing, and the role of the public sector. And that's a big challenge in the context of constrained uh, you know, budgets and the, the sort of public finance situation. So we do have a strong policy sort of history around place and well-being. And we heard from Irene Butterman at the Improvement Service about the work they've been doing shaping places for well-being and looking at how place place-based approaches can help to challenge health inequalities mm -hmm. and Scotland has some particular challenges around health inequalities um, which which other parts of the UK don't have we have particularly extreme health inequality so how do we use our tools as place makers as planners to actually address those things um, so putting all of this together is is part of the challenge and I think we're leading on it but we have bigger problems Certainly the headline policies have made it very clear about the priorities in, in all planning decisions, tackling the climate and the nature emergencies. But we're also seeing some of the niggles about how it operates in practice coming through. So how policies should be interpreted at the local level. And we're seeing some discourse and discussion around particularly around housing delivery and the interpretation of policy in NPF 4. So although I would, I would really support, and I do support NPF4 as a whole, and those ambitious policies, we're, we also need to grapple with, the, again, the delivery on the ground and how we make NPF4 do the things we want it to do and not get hung up on the commas or the lack of commas in certain places and the interpretation of very specific policies. So we, ha we are seeing a few little niggles here and there with some of the detailed policies, which we need to get over. And that's the next challenge. Thank you.